Ah, hi there, everyone. Um, thank you very much, Bob, for that exposition there. That uh, really helps and sets the scene for what I'm going to present now. Um, I've got a, uh, a few questions that we come up, a uh, quick poll as we usually do on these things. Um, do you already use aggregates? Um, and do you see aggregates as a complex built in? Um, I must admit, I haven't seen it used much, though personally I think it's uh, a very handy uh, built-in, and I think it has been seen in the community as a, as a complex, and I'm trying to uh, demystify it in this presentation here. So, uh, right, with um, Bob's uh, uh, presentation in mind, let's actually see how we can use um, this distributed, this distributed um uh, um, situation. I'm just trying to share my screen. Maybe a second. Um, it takes more than a few moments. Yeah. So if people are seeing this. Um, I've got an example on the training um, for system. We've got this uh, class list of people here. It's uh, only a gigabyte in size, but it's, um, if you look at the file parts of this um, uh, logical file, we can see that it's nicely distributed over the three nodes of the um, uh, training for and in fact it's replicated as well so there's copies so we've got replication of data as well on board there now <clears throat> so let's go start using mining this this file here for information um, and first I thought of, I thought of um, showing you what not to do um, I remember Wellington in his Flanders campaign in the Napoleonic Wars uh, it was such an awful campaign. He said, well, at least I learned what not to do. <laughs> and I've always taken that as, a, as, a, as, a, as my guide. So this is not distributed, using the distributed data at all. This is just gathering stats, um, count of um, by gender, uh, count of the uh, number of people by gender, and the sum of their age. And all I'm doing is essentially taking a row from this entire data set and uh, uh, generating stats from it, and uh, generating a data set from uh, effectively two, two probes globally. And the results you get here are, it doesn't crash, it's such a small data set, but this is where you will get skew problems if you try using HPCC in this manner. I'd better go and um, capture this just to check that I'm prove I'm not cheating. So I'll capture those results, those global results, and uh, move on to uh, let's just do this work properly. So we have the same, exactly the same data set. I'm filtering the valid data in exactly the same way. And I use the table command, um, grouping by gender, and uh, counting the number of that group in that gender and the sum of their ages. And I'm doing it locally, as Bob said, if you use the local qualifier, then it uh, says, right, run this on each node, independently on each node here. Hugh's just saying I'm going to get a few results. And um, given these results, you end up with, on a three, two results for each node. So you'll end up with uh, six results. And they've all been generated. That's the heavy lifting, basically. Um, Obviously, that's not very interesting. What you need is the second part, which is to um, uh, amalgamate or aggregate together those intermediate results. Now, that's a trivial task because effectively that's your input to the second phase, which is nothing at all, really. So I've done this in my case here. Um, so I've, I've still got my local. So that's identical to the previous work here. In it. But here, for the second phase, I'm just grouping by gender and I do a roll-up group, and um, I end up with the same results that will have happened. Same results that will have run in a fraction of the time to the first work unit. Again, I can't really demonstrate the the time difference because it is a small data set on the training system here. 
Now this, at long last, is where we get to aggregates because you've got a table command which is running locally and you've got the intermediate results being aggregated as a separate function, separate entity. Now move to aggregate and that's your one-shot stop for, for this entire process. So this will run as required by HPCC. In other, it runs in a two-stage um, process. So that it will do the um, heavy lifting, the first phase of it, and then move on to also merge uh, the intermediate results. This, in this context, local means stop early. So if you put local in with aggregate, it really just means do the effectively the table command. So with this one, you see it's worked on the, on the uh, data locally and is in fact terminated early because of this local command here. The difference between aggregate and the table command is aggregate for the heavy lifting, um, the first transform is a transform function, whereas of course in the, um, in the other it's a record layout for the table command. But um, really that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, now, Again, that's not that interesting, having intermediate results. You want the uh, actual results, and all you have to do for aggregate there is just remove the local, which is how everyone would run it anyway, and this is, is producing um, the final global results, again, identical to the, um, to the original work unit, but uh, sort of differently. Um, but they're identical there, you can see that. And all that, to do that, all you have to do is remove the local. And it's, firstly, the heavy lifting is identical. And it itself has, uh, the, the compiler has managed to um, deduce the second uh, phase, the second phase from the, from the uh, format of the, the, of the first transform. So you don't actually have to specify a second transform. You can, but um, I've, I've found I've never needed to myself. Um, so you could do something like, um, uh, and there you'll have, right, what? that has specified here, and the, um, the results, what, so what that will do is take, effectively it's like an iterator or roll up, it will pass the first two results to the, um, to the iteration once and then gather, merge those two results and then they pass that result onto the next, uh, onto the next um, row, effectively iterating through by the group um, that you've got. Um, to eventually end up, end up with one, so, uh, the merge is a bit like iterate, and the the um, the uh, results of the previous transform are uh, actually presented as right one, um, which uh, rather than right two. Um, so it might be a bit confusing, but a little tip I want to show people while I'm while I'm on the air is uh, how to demystify um, uh, transforms. And what I do is um, I effectively trade round generating lengths of items. So if I've, um, so the first time I call, call uh, let's say, this transform, so I've got a, a merge phase of this aggregate. And really, I just use the length of the, the previous, what I believe is the previous, uh, transform uh, to increment, do something different with, e e with each iteration. So in this case, my merge transform is taking the left-hand side, which um, calls, which will be empty here, uh, gender will be gender, and then if the length of my left-hand side is here, I, I output one, two, three, whatever. And when you iterate through again, calls will now retain, will now have the outputs from the first iteration in it. So the length of calls will now be different. And if we look at the result of this, notice it's only been called twice. 
So for each, um, you, because we've got a three node um, training system, you can see that the merge transform has been called twice here. M, M1, so the first time round that one got entered, and the second time round M2. So it actually shows you, demonstrates the number of iterations and what it's done with each iteration. If you try another, the other way round, for example, if I assume that it's the right hand side, um, then you'll just end up with effectively the last call, M2, in there. Okay? Um, the, uh, the 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 right hand calls will be empty on both on on both iterations. So if you're not quite sure what what's going on, um, iterate through um, generating using the length of the previous result um, to accumulate information, and you start getting an understanding of um, iteration of, uh, of how this uh, particular transform is being called. I've got the um, slide here. I'm going to go back to the um, uh, talk here and um, go forward here. So, for example, just to clarify, I've, the first iteration, you'll know, have F and called, and the results will be F and F1, and then on the second iteration, the left-hand side, or right one as it is, will have F1 in it, and that's where you get your F1, F2 there. Um, I hope I haven't um, bamboozled people there, but uh, I myself in the past have needed to, to work out um, what, what, what part of it, what, which side is being presented with what data in a transform, and I found that um, um, very handy to demystify things for myself. So, um, anyway, I have a last question there. Um, has that has that helped? Has has aggregate de been demystified for people? Um, it's effectively all stop stop. It works in the way that HPCC is meant to be used. Um, so, uh, Bob. Yeah, Alan. Thank you so much. Um, uh, if you would be so kind to have a look at the questions coming in from the audience and yeah. go ahead and prioritize them if you would. And um, yeah. let's let's review the uh, poll questions here. Uh, your first question right. was, do you already use aggregate? And we had 80% of the respondents said no. So yeah. um, that was good. So uh, a new topic for them, uh, if you're not using it, um, maybe because you didn't understand how to use it. So... Um, it was good. Second poll question that you had was, do you see aggregate as a complex built-in? And we had, we were split right across the middle. We had 50% said yes, 50% said no. So the jury's still out on that one. So um, let's take some questions from the audience. We'll, we'll hit the uh, first one here. Uh, where else can I learn more about the aggregate function? Um, well, there's the um, reference. Um, manual, but uh, there's also my YouTube. I I uh, I don't know if HPCC itself has done you um, um, uh, videos on this, um, but there should be. Uh, there is my YouTube presentation out there, and I can uh, somehow put a link up to it after this uh, presentation is over. Um, also, the play area. I think really, if there isn't anything in the play area at the moment, and I think either Bob, me, or Richard should put something in a play area for people. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Just a uh, little break up there a little bit on your end. I, I think yeah. it might be, hopefully it's not my end, but um, let's, let's just do one more question here. I, what, what's the criteria that demand the user write their own merge transform? Yeah, that <laughs> I was rather hoping you wouldn't ask, <laughs> ask that one. I I've never needed to. The compiler seems to do the job. It is documented in the reference manual, and all I can say is just read the manual, read the reference manual. Yeah, to be to be honest with you as well, I've used aggregate in some of our examples and testing, and I haven't seen the use of the merge transform either. But I imagine there has been one, uh, or Gavin wouldn't have written it as such. So yeah. um, those of you out there in the community who don't know who Gavin is, he's the gentleman who 
is on our HPCC development team that has uh, written uh, the uh, compiler and um, works with the language. So, yeah. uh, I would also say, if I'd like to add that if people do have, um, find a use uh, or need, realize that they need a, a merge transform, they could put an example up on our forum in the tips and tricks. Um, which is always very helpful. I look, I look through that quite regularly, and um, glean some very informa useful information from from the forum. Absolutely, that's 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 that is a good point there, Alan. So yeah, if you've got anything out there, because some of you start using uh, aggregate and uh, find the need for the merge transform, where it uh, kind of saves your bacon a little bit, and you get able to solve a problem more elegantly than normal, uh, we'd love to hear it. All right, so um, your last question in the poll, we'll, uh, we'll take that. And let's see, we had, has aggregate been demystified for you? Well, we had 60% said yes, and still 40%, uh, well, 20% said no, and 20% are not sure. So okay. um, uh, again, that, that may be called for further research and uh, maybe watch the uh, presentation again, which we always yep. know this presentation is uh, recorded and always at the HPCC portal. You can always get to our tech talks. And actually, I want to um, give a shout out to uh, one of our our colleagues, Lorraine Chapman, who was so uh, gracious in putting together a wiki where you can get to all of the tech talk topics all the way back to episode one. And she has not only uh, given you a, a chronological order of them but also she has separated them by topic, which is a really, really cool thing. So again, if you go out to the HBCC Systems portal and go out to the wiki page, you will see uh, notice um, a topic there on Tech Talks and previous Tech Talks, and uh, just well done. Uh, it was really beautiful how she put all that together.